Welcome, my dear students and others who might have accidentally stumbled across this YouTube video to my continuing coverage of Chapter 8's discussion on basic concepts of chemical bonding. In this video, I'm going to teach you about bond enthalpy. So what is bond enthalpy? Well, it turns out that bond enthalpy, and in this chart from our text referenced in the description below, we see various bond enthalpies for individual bonds between a lot of different elements, is a measure of how strong a bond is. And the units here are kilojoules per mole. So if I have, for example, one mole of carbon hydrogen bonds, its bond enthalpy is 413 kilojoules. Make sense? So we can use the bond enthalpies in that table that I just showed you to estimate the reaction enthalpies of different reactions. All we have to do is figure out what kinds of bonds and how many of them are broken and what kinds of bonds are formed in a chemical reaction. Then we just do the math to calculate the reaction enthalpy. For example, if we were asked to calculate the reaction enthalpy or delta H Rickson of the following reaction and we took this bond enthalpy approach, we could summarize this as follows. The total number of bonds broken, that is reactant bonds, includes one mole of CH bonds right here and one mole of chlorine chlorine single bonds. Why? Because as you look at this closely, what you see is that one single carbon hydrogen bond gets broken and replaced with a carbon chlorine bond. And then one chlorine chlorine single bond gets broken and replaced with a chlorine hydrogen bond. Make sense? The number of bonds formed or made then, that is the bonds shown on the product side, is one mole of carbon chlorine single bonds right here and one mole of hydrogen chlorine bonds shown right there. Now the full delta H Rickson then could be calculated by subtracting the combined enthalpies of the bonds formed from the combined enthalpies of the bonds broken according to this equation. In other words, delta H Rickson using the bond enthalpy approach is enthalpies of bonds broken minus enthalpies of bonds formed, which is essentially the enthalpies of the bonds in the reactants minus the enthalpies of the bonds in the products. So it's reactants minus products, all with bond enthalpies. In this case, then, we see that we lose a single carbon hydrogen bond in the reactant, as well as a single chlorine chlorine bond in the reactant, which I'd represent right here, the enthalpies of bonds broken. And then I would subtract from that the bonds formed in the product, a single bond of carbon chlorine, and then another single bond of hydrogen chlorine. If you throw the numbers into their respective locations taken from the table I showed you a few slides ago, they will all come down to this, giving you negative 104 kilojoules per mole for this entire reaction. Make sense? Good. Now I have to interrupt here to make a quick clarification. You might remember from back in chapter five, link two floating over my head or in the description below that another way of calculating a reaction enthalpy is by inserting each reactants and products individual enthalpy of formation value into the equation shown right here, where the sigma symbols right here represent the sum of. So you take the sum of the enthalpies of formation of the products minus the total sum of the enthalpies of formation of reactants. So if you use this equation, which is not a bond enthalpy approach, this is an enthalpy of formation approach. It's products minus reactants. It might be confusing because it contrasts with the equation that I just showed you a moment ago, which has reactants minus products. So why the contradiction? It's not a contradiction. As it turns out, the equation down here is a different way of calculating your reaction enthalpy, which is done by subtracting the combined enthalpies of the bonds formed, that is product bonds, from those of the bonds broken, that is reactant bonds. So this bond enthalpy approach has is all talking about bonds, and it ends up being bonds of reactants minus bonds of products. This contrasts, of course, with the enthalpy of formation approach, which is this equation down here that has products minus reactants. To clarify then, these are two different ways of calculating the exact same thing, reaction enthalpy. One has products minus reactants, and that's the one using enthalpies of formation down here. And the other has reactants minus products, which is using bond enthalpies. Two different ways of getting to the exact same results. Now each method, as it turns out, trying it might give slightly different results, but the outcome of the two methods for any one reaction should end up being very close, if not identical. Is that okay? Good. Because I tell you what, when I was new at this, it confused the snot out of me and I want to make sure that doesn't happen to you. We move on then to some actual example problems. This one says, using the table that we just showed, I want you to estimate the delta H of reaction for each of the following gas phase reactions. Now, just so you know, I'm going to take you through one of these, example A, in the next video. Until then, my dear students and other viewers, please have an enjoyable rest of your day.